Once you're happy with the position, apply the tourniquet. Um, this is a better technique to tying it because you can actually release it with one hand. Once you've chosen the vein you want to go for, give the area clean with a chlorhexidine wipe. Get your needle ready with the bevel side facing up. Go in at about a 20 degree angle, making sure that with your non-dominant hand, you're holding the skin taut. This helps anchor the vein that you're going into. As you go into the vein, you will feel it kind of give, and that is your cue to get the blood bottles ready. Uh, start taking your blood. Now, we've accidentally put on the other side. If you're right-handed, put it on your right side. Make it easier for yourself. Make life easy. And take your blood. Um, anchor the needle with your non-dominant hand, and don't move. Try to keep it as stable as possible. Um, and once you've taken your blood before retracting the needle, important, important, important to take the tourniquet off. So if you don't do that, it could lead to quite messy situations. Um, so tourniquet off. And we'll want to go ahead and palpate our patient and apply our tourniquet. Go ahead and palpate with our two non-dominant fingers. You can ask your patient to make a fist if this helps you. All right, anchor your patient's vein. On the count of three, one, two, three. Have the blood flash. Be sure to watch for your fill line. Okay, looks like we have our 10 milliliters in this one. Disengage, set to the side. Grab our anaerobic, insert. Normally you'll hold on to your butterfly, but it, it's typically best to let it sit freely since we're drawing so much blood. And the eye's got to be facing me, okay? Yep. And I will be going in in a minute. Okay, if I'd like to just relax your arm for me. Just taking the tourniquet off. And just squeeze on the um, tissue for me. Okay? I'm all set here. If you'd please straighten your arm. It'll just take a moment while I apply the tourniquet. Applying a tourniquet slows the flow of blood in the veins and increases venous filling, thus making the veins more prominent easier to locate and easier to enter. Use your fingertip to palpate the antecubital fossa to locate the median cubital vein. Palpation helps determine the direction of blood flow in the vein, to gauge the vein's size and depth, and to estimate its tendency to roll. Grasp the patient's arm firmly with your hand, placing your thumb approximately two inches below the intended puncture site. With your thumb, pull the skin taut over the vein to help anchor it in place. Then let the patient know you're ready to make the puncture so the patient won't startle and jump. You'll feel a slight pinch. Position the needle bevel side up and line it up with a vein. Position the needle so that it forms a 30 degree angle with the surface of the arm. With a single, short, but firm motion, swiftly insert the needle through the skin and into the vein. Push the evacuated tube onto the needle when the needle enters the vein. As the vein aligns with the needle, blood will begin to move out of the vein up into the needle. Maintain a constant, slight forward pressure on the end of the tube. The evacuated tubes are color-coded based on their additives. 
know the types of additives and which color tubes are to be drawn based on requisition. As soon as blood begins to flow into the collection tube, instruct the patient to open his hand and remove the tourniquet from his arm. Removing the tourniquet allows the blood to return to its normal rate of flow through the vein and helps reduce bleeding at the puncture site. In this illustration, you can see formation of the platelet plug and the fibrin clot. Applying pressure at the needle entry site immediately after removing the needle will prevent a hematoma from forming and allow hemostasis to seal the wound. We'll need our tourniquet. Go ahead and apply this now. I've already asked my patient for consent and also explained the procedure. And I've previously washed my hands. Okay. So we're going to palpate with our two index fingers of our non-dominant hand. Maybe we need to ask our patient sometimes to make a fist. Check our needle, make sure everything's okay with it. It's good. And also with the syringe before you stick your patient, you want to pull back on the plunger to loosen it. Sometimes the needles has been sitting for a couple of years, so you just want to loosen the plunger a little bit before you stick the patient. Thank your vein. And one, two, stick. You want to slowly pull back. With this test that I'll be performing, it's a serum test, I'll need three milliliters of blood. So very slowly I'll pull back the plunger until I have three milliliters of blood. I can tell when I have three milliliters of blood because my syringe is a graduate cylinder, which means it's been marked on the side. You'll see the blood slowly move in, gradually pull back your plunger. This will take a little bit of time because obviously if we're doing this, our patient cannot tolerate the suction from regular tubes. It's also important to go very slow because if we pull our plunger back, we can hemolyze our specimen by pulling back the plunger too fast. And as we're doing this, keep in mind your patient may be nervous. It's okay to talk to your patient. Probably would put them at ease too. This could take a couple of minutes to draw the amount of blood you need. Okay. Looks like I almost have my three milliliters of blood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to release my tourniquet, grab my gauze, fold it over once, fold it over twice, Pull my needle out, apply pressure, immediately safety cap. In this instance only, we can sit the syringe down and everything's good with this one. Okay, with my non-dominant hand, I'm going to anchor with my thumb. My other four fingers is going to wrap around the patient's arm. What you'll do is you push down and pull back a little bit and that anchors your patient's vein a little bit. With my dominant hand, it, that's the one I will stick with. All right, here I go. All right, so I have my needle in, and with correct order of draw, the light, light blue tube will go first. We'll let it fill. And this is one of the hard parts is holding steady with the tube as you're drawing. You still want to have a good hold on the needle. Okay. And remember always with light blue, you need to let it fill completely. It's pre vacuumized to stop at a certain amount. All right, so that's full. We'll go ahead and disengage this tube. Insert the next. And sometimes a little blood will come out around the edges. That's okay, too. And one thing that you can look for to help you tell when the blood is done is it shimmers as it's moving, as it moves in. Once it stops shimmering, more likely your tube's full. And this tube is full. 
It's my last tube, so I'll release my tourniquet. Pull the tube out. Get my gauze, fold it over once, twice. Pull my needle out, cover, and immediately safety cap. Ask your patient to hold the, the gauze. Sir, will you please hold that? 